I really love the beginning stages of a project. I love figuring out exactly what this thing needs to be and what it needs to do. I love the wireframing, the strategizing. In this video, I want to walk you through my process and approach to starting off a new project by showing you the start of a project that I recently started working on, a new landing page for the ConvertKit marketing site. So I'm going to talk you through how I approach getting a brief from my teammates and how I get started working on it. So this project that I want to show you today is a landing page and a sign up page for our free migration service. So we offer to move anyone who is coming over to ConvertKit will move you over from your previous email marketing software provider for free. So this is a page that needs to tell people about that uh, and about how this process works, show them their options for what type of migrations we'll give them and allow them to sign up for it as well. This is the current page and it's a part of our site that hasn't really had any design attention before. So that means there's a whole lot of potential here for me. As you can see, it's kind of just a big block of text. It is all useful information. It's telling you about what to expect, how the process works. And then there's this form here that allows people to express their interest in it. This project came about not only because obviously this page is one that could use some design help, but also because the migrations team want to change the process a little bit. Whereas previously people would fill out this form and submit their interest. And then the team would send them a link to this form here, which is much longer, much more detailed, where they'd give them basically everything that the migration team would need to know in order to get the migration done. Wow, how many times am I going to say migration in this video? This form is really long and there's a lot of text and stuff going on with it. And then we've had feedback from people that it's confusing, it's like difficult to fill out, it's just a lot of effort. The migrations team really just asked me to change out this form part and work on maybe some styling and things in this form to make it a better experience to read and a bit easier to understand. But I think that there's a lot of potential here to properly market our migration service. It's a great feature. It's not one that our competitors offer across the board. So we can stand out with this and it could be a reason for people to sign up and choose us. So I want to put my efforts into designing a marketing landing page for it as well as making the forms and everything a good experience. So where do I get started with all this? The first thing that I do is talk to the team who are requesting this design for me, kind of like my internal client, and I listen to them. I hear what they want, what ideas they have. And actually one of the people on the team, Morgan, who put together this wireframe to show what she was thinking for it, thinking of the idea of that maybe people would submit their information saying how many subscribers they had, who they were moving over from. And based on that, we'd show them what their options were. So that way we're not bombarding people with all these different options. If some of them don't apply to them. They're only going to see the ones that are available to them. Makes sense. And that then someone would click this card and uh, fill out the relevant form that applies to whichever type of migration they're choosing. So once I'd had a few conversations with them and felt like I was understanding what they needed from this and where some of the potential like huge impact we could make with this was, I got started as I do with every project on my iPad with my Apple Pencil in the app Concepts and I drew this wonderful picture. Um, yeah, right about now is probably when a lot of you are wondering how on earth I am a full-time designer. But yeah, you can be a designer and you can draw like this. <laughs> this stage of wireframing is really just for me. I'm not showing these to anyone else. I'm not expecting anyone else to understand them. They're just for me to get my ideas out and um, I process my ideas clearest when I can see them. So that's what I'm doing here is just doing some rough sketches of some vague ideas I have for ways we could arrange things. Right about here is where I started thinking perhaps it should be a marketing landing page and adding like a testimonial quote and maybe some easily scannable checklist of some benefits, that sort of thing. I also started to think about some of the challenges and how I'd address them. Things like, what if someone doesn't want to use our service to migrate over? What if they just are looking for information about how to move themselves over and they happen to end up on this page? So I'm thinking, okay, maybe that could be in the FAQs because it's not the main point of the page, um, but I do want there to be a link available somewhere to information for someone uh, about how to switch themselves. I also started thinking about that giant wall of text on the current page where most of it is explaining exactly what we migrate to do with forms, exactly what we migrate to do with sequences and all of that. So I thought maybe we could have kind of like a little tooltip next to the like thing where it says we'll migrate 30 forms and there's a tooltip that'll tell you exactly what that entails. Here I thought that maybe we should have a diagram. I've seen this work well on other pages on our site. I do a bunch of user tests and research. I talked about this in my previous vlog actually, um, link on screen if you want to go watch that. 
But uh, in those tests, I've seen people really stop and take in this diagram that we have on one of the other pages on our site. So I thought maybe this would be a good chance to put this in here. I briefly thought through a couple of different ideas for the page itself, maybe an illustration, maybe we lead with a quote. Uh, I also started thinking through the form and ways that I could arrange that overwhelming number of form fields and information, maybe into sections with little check boxes when you've gone through them so that you feel a little sense of completion and, and progress as you move through. Normally I would push the wireframing a lot further, honestly, but at this stage, because there were so many different parts to this project and so many eventual different pages that I'm going to have to be making, I decided to go from here and jump straight into wireframing in Figma instead. And I decided to record my screen as I did that. So this is me basically taking those ideas from those very rough sketches and bringing them to life in Figma. As you can see, this is much more understandable, right? Um, at this stage in wireframing, I'm really not trying to make things look perfect. Things do end up kind of looking half designed because I'm utilizing our design system. I have done a video all about how I set up this design system for a marketing site in Figma, which again, I will link on a card. But uh, basically I have all these type styles and I have these elements like buttons and components like the checklist and the testimonial quote that I can just drag in that I reuse all the time. So I make use of that when wireframing, even though I kind of don't like that it ends up looking like a half designed thing. At this stage, my design is really just about the structure of the page and where I'm thinking of putting the information, the hierarchy of it, all of that sort of thing. It's not meant to be about should this button be green or red, you know. But sometimes I can't help myself but make something the right color. <laughs> so the first stage of wireframing on the iPad really helps me think through all of the content that I'm going to have to fit into this page and start thinking about possible ways to arrange it. And then when I get onto the computer and I'm doing it in Figma, that's when I focus more on the details. So thinking about things like, okay, should these things be laid out as four cards? Should it be a table? Should the process diagram be horizontal? Should it be vertical? Those things I find much easier to visualize and make decisions on when I'm seeing them on the computer versus a hand-drawn wireframe. I thought I liked the cards better than the table, so I dug in on them and tried to refine them. I thought that perhaps there shouldn't be an icon next to each one of these points with the tooltip. That was kind of feeling a bit complicated and confusing, adding additional noise to this already quite busy part of the page. And obviously a lot of what we do as designers is trying to make complex information seem simple and easy to understand. And I was adding in something that was making that worse, basically. I tried a couple of different ways to lay out the differences between the migrations. I want it to be easy for people to scan them and see what the differences are. So that's why the numbers were bolded and then I'm trying them kind of at the sides so they can just read down the list and see what's different. I added the crossed out ones on the quick migration one as well because if someone has over 5,000 subscribers, we really do want to encourage them to do one of the more involved migrations. It gets more of their stuff over, makes the product more useful for them. So I just thought that adding those in made the quick migration just look a little bit, little bit less desirable. It showed you what you weren't getting, if that makes sense. And about this stage in the process is where I start to look outwards for my inspiration. Up until now, I've been trying to just think of my own ideas and think through the information that we have and see how I think best to lay it out. But um, I always do reach a point where I want to start bringing in some inspiration from outside. So I look on Dribbble for how other people have handled like I don't know, a pricing table showing different plans, different options, um, different forms that people have designed. That inspires me and I get ideas for it of things that I should try out in my own design. So that's what I got to on the first like wireframing session I did. The next day I came back and I did another session. I spent most of my time focusing on the cards and dealing with that information. As you can probably see when you look through these different iterations of my design, I haven't iterated at all on the FAQs or this bottom section yet. I like to just focus on one challenge at a time and I don't force myself to redesign the whole page for every iteration. There's things that I'll tackle later. And I always like to deal with the most complicated parts first in the wireframe. Then I thought, okay, I really didn't push this very far, this initial step of the thing that someone submits in order for us to know what options to display them. So that's what I started working on next. I thought it could be fun if it was like a sentence someone filled out instead of just form fields stacked on top of each other because this is still a form, you know, form doesn't have to look formy in order for it to be a form. Here's the fun part too where I started thinking through um, different cases. So I'm like, okay, what if someone scrolls to the bottom of the page and they haven't filled this out yet? Maybe we can show them a little box encouraging them to, you know, make sure they do that. And then I thought, well, if this is the main thing people, we want people to do on a page, why not when you scroll to the bottom and you haven't used the form yet, just show them the whole freaking form again, really encourage them to do this 
to see their options. And then once they fill it out, that's when we change out this bottom call to action here to be about signing up or requesting a demo if kind of as a secondary CTA if they haven't, um, if we haven't convinced them yet to get started with the migration. So this is where I've gotten to actually so far with the landing page, starting off, there'll be a header of some sort. I'm not sure if I want an illustration up there or not at the moment, a diagram, um, the form, quote FAQs and then once they have filled out the form and they're seeing their options displayed um, I've added some little benefit check marks here to further try and convince them the quote of course stays there so do the FAQs the swaps out and if they have less than 5,000 subscribers to bring over if they're not eligible for our more involved migrations then we'll just show them this one and you can see that I haven't left these crossed out options on this card when we're only showing this card because I don't think it's fair to make them feel like they're missing out on something when this is the only option that's available to them at this stage. I also added these little free icon things. Um, I just think even though none of them cost, I think it's nice to be reminded that, hey, this is an absolutely free service. Uh, and just because we say it in the heading doesn't mean that people will understand or see that, or realize it when they're seeing all the things they're getting, you know? So why not repeat it? So then I started moving on to laying out the forms. Uh, this one is for the quick migration. I did a few different options, trying to think, should I split it up into two sections? Should I like give it some sort of progress, have it on the right when you're seeing a quote on the left, it could encourage you to keep going and filling it out if you're seeing that someone else had a really good experience with it, you know? But in the end, I think that I decided this one here is probably gonna be best. It's a fairly short form, so it's all right to be on one page. I don't know how exactly to do this yet, but I will work with my developer, Corey, on making this happen, but I wanted to bring over information that they submitted previously on this page as well. So when they're on this page, we know how many subscribers they have and who they're migrating from. So I want those fields to be pre-populated when they come to this page. I think that'll just make it a nicer experience. But that meant I also had to think about what if someone just comes to this page directly, maybe through search or someone sent them a link to it, they found a link somewhere else on our site, I don't know. Um, I need to think about that option as well. So that's what this one here was. No fields filled out. And also this little block here that shows them that if they have over 5,000 subscribers, we can basically give them a better service and linking to that. I'm still not 100% sold on this, but the idea is there for now anyway. And then laying out our longer form, for this, I decided to have this little like bar at the top that will fill in with a little tick probably as you go. And I like this idea of having information on the left and fields on the right. I think it's easier to understand what section you're in. And they're also splitting it up like this does make you feel like you're progressing as you go through. This is the idea that I had drawn up. Um, so I went from this to this. Go figure. I think this will make for a better experience as people are filling out the form and that we're also gonna use this save and continue later option for them too. So if they're feeling like, oh my God, I've been figuring out all these things, I just wanna take a break, they can do that without worrying they're gonna lose all the information that they've submitted. Somewhere down here, oh yeah, I also have our confirmation page as well. I took the header and the footer off the form pages cause I didn't want people to get distracted, I suppose, and go looking other places on our site. I want them to stay focused and finish the form. But back here, when they've reached the confirmation page, now we want them to stick around our site, right? So yeah, giving them some options, I suppose. By this point, after all these iterations and options, I felt like I was at a stage where I was ready for feedback. I always make sure not to ask for feedback and solicit that before I feel like uh, I've put my best ideas in place. Um, I'll ask for feedback when I feel like I've got something and I wanna see what other people think about it, get their thoughts, or if I'm really struggling with something, that's when I'll share um, and get feedback. I don't wanna waste people's time asking for feedback when there's stuff I already know I wanna do differently. So at this point, I was ready. I exported these screens and I put them in InVision, which is my preferred way of gathering feedback. I know I could do it within Figma, but I just really like doing it through here. What I do in InVision is I do set up hotspots on the buttons and things. People can click them and go through to different parts of the flow. But what I also do is, if I turn on comment mode here, is I add these little tour points throughout the design. Um, and I encourage people to read these when I share it. When you share the InVision file with someone, they like glow, so they are quite enticing to click on. And this is where I explain my design basically. So I tend not to have a meeting and present my work because we work remotely and we try to be asynchronous at ConvertKit, then this works well as a way to give a tour through my designs and to share my thoughts and explain parts that uh, perhaps don't look immediately obvious like 
this part here explaining that this gray box will in fact be an illustration so yeah i went through all of these designs added all these little tour points throughout explaining various things and now is when I share them with my team for feedback. From here, there'll be two different ways the project could go. If I've got everything right, if the flow is right, the structure of information is right, I haven't forgotten anything or missed anything out that's really important, I will probably move on to doing the visual design. So that's when I do start thinking about the colors and the exact shapes and what type of illustration, what kind of background will go on this part, more of that part of the design. But if there is something glaring that I've missed, or I don't know if people have feedback that this isn't the right direction, then I'll stay in this wireframing stage a little longer. And like I said, this project is ongoing. This is literally where I'm at with it right now. So I don't know what's gonna happen next, but I'm excited to share it with you when that does come about. Hope this was useful or at the very least interesting to see how I get started at the beginning of a project see how I strategize and wireframe and think through things. I would love to start sharing more of my work in this way. So please do let me know if you've enjoyed it by leaving a comment, giving a thumbs up, just tell me what you want to see from me. If you're a designer, I would also love to hear how the beginning stages of your project process compare to mine. Is it very different? Is there a lot of things that are the same? Let's have a chat about it down below in the comments. All right. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you have a good week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.